Okay, Steve. Food, it, food security is defined as having consistent, dependable access to enough nutritious and culturally appropriate food for an active and healthy life through normal channels. Dumpster diving, or even the food bank, while each can provide short-term support, are not considered normal channels for food security. Nearly 14% of U.S. households experience food insecurity in any given year. That's 45 million individuals, including one in five children. The percentage of food insecure college students is between two and four times the national average. That's between three and 4,000 MSU students who may be struggling to learn without having enough to eat. Hunger has consequences that are experienced physically, emotionally, and mentally. Hunger is a source of pain, faintness, and anxiety. It impedes development and lowers academic achievement, especially in children. Hunger is implicated in chronic diseases and mental health disorders. How is it possible to be food insecure and obese? Individuals who are food insecure rely on low cost, energy dense foods that satisfy the appetite but are nutrient poor. Being food insecure causes anxiety about where our next meal will come from, which slows our metabolism and makes us overeat when food is available. Many nutrition students have been uh, attempting a $3 a day challenge for many years to be better understand food insecurity, develop coping strategies, and gain empathy. The rules are to spend no more than $3 a day on food for five consecutive days, strive for a nutritious diet, and pay for everything you eat. No free food or charity or dumpster diving. Why $3 a day? Well, three billion people in the world live on less than $3 per day, and not just for food. In the United States, a more reasonable guide is a per-person food stamp or SNAP allotment. In the last 10 years, the average allotment has increased from $2 to $3 to now about $4 per day per person. There are five parts to this assignment. Plan what you're going to buy and do your shopping, noting your strategies. Keep a journal about how you felt physically, mentally, and emotionally each day. Complete an application for food assistance. Analyze how well you met your nutrition needs, and then volunteer at the food bank and reflect on that experience. Students plan to purchase inexpensive whole foods like eggs, beans, peanut butter, milk, yogurt, pasta, bread, and fresh produce. While some students purchase those whole foods, most actually purchased instant pasta and rice meals, ramen, and frozen or canned vegetables. They discovered that powdered milk is more affordable than fresh. Foods they would have to avoid included butter, yogurt, cheese, most meats, sweets, and luxury beverages like coffee, tea, soda, and alcohol. Fresh produce was just too expensive, especially local or organic options. They learned that seasonings, unless purchased from bulk bins in small quantities, were not in the budget. The students scouted the least expensive places to buy food in town, and many settled on Walmart or town and country. They carried calculators or estimated their running total, trying not to overspend. One was embarrassed at the checkout when she had to put something back because she couldn't afford it. She explained the assignment to the cashier who said, yeah, I know what that's like. As the five days passed, students' descriptions of their physical, emotional, and mental state became more extreme. I'm feeling hungry and tired. I'm frustrated, I'm tempted by cravings. I have a headache, I'm mentally distracted. I feel unmotivated and I'm depressed. I'm exhausted, I can't stay awake in class. One student described it this way. Food insecurity is more than just hunger. It's a mental state of worry. I was constantly thinking about food and what my next meal was gonna be. I noticed as the days went on, I became more and more easily irritated and seem stressed out all the time. Most students have difficulty following all the rules. About one third admit to failing at least once during the five days. For example, some students could not resist joining friends for a social eating experience. Others enjoyed an unplanned dessert when the opportunity presented itself. And some drank coffee free to stay awake during their normal activities. Based on their own nutrient analysis, students had difficulty meeting their energy needs on a daily basis. They consumed about 60% of their required calories on average, but they easily exceeded their need for protein. For vitamins and minerals, they were much more likely to be short on those found in fresh produce versus meat and dairy products. They learned the importance of dietary variety, seasonings and flavors, as well as cooking skills. They learned the importance of sharing meals with others. It was hard to watch others eat and feel deprived and marginalized. They avoided friends. There was tension. They felt excluded. Food was rationed and exercise was avoided. They learned the importance of being able to express your values with your food choices. 
When it was time to apply for food assistance, many did this online because they were too self-conscious to go to the county office in person. Those who did felt awkward, embarrassed, and judged. The application was difficult to complete. Questions were hard to understand, and it was 12 pages long. Students reflected when visiting the food bank that emergency food supplies can be critical for families who have limited food budgets. They noticed the lack of fresh produce and lack of variety. Students thought about how the experience prepared them to be food and nutrition professionals. They reported greater awareness and the need to be understanding and compassionate, caring and patient, and to approach clients with empathy rather than judgment. One said, it's an experience that unless you actually go through it, there's no way to imagine what it's like. This is called transformational learning, and compassion can be developed through experiences like this. Students expressed that as professionals, they would need to work on community and social issues to address the root causes of hunger, rather than developing programs that address only symptoms. As a new graduate student, I existed for my first couple of weeks on one large zucchini from a classmate's garden and a five pound can of refried beans. I ate like this until I borrowed money from my mom while my student loan application was being processed. I didn't know then that I would be teaching about community food security in the future, but I still needed to complete this challenge for myself. I ate eggs and tasteless black beans and peanut butter on discounted stale rolls. I was hungry and I lacked focus and energy. But what struck me most was how angry I was. So angry I wouldn't want to be neighbors with me. That's why hunger is more than an individual or household problem. It's a community problem. And even professors can become more compassionate. Thank you.